Today we're looking at a deck inspired by MTGA Brew Lab, and I say inspired by because quite frankly I didn't have enough copies of High Noon to put the full four in here, but it kind of functions similarly nonetheless. Now we've got some early control cards in here because this is a control deck after all. And then on turn three, we start setting things up. So we've got Takasia's Welcome, draws us a card every time we make a token, and then Urabrask's Forge, which famously makes tokens. Now, in the meantime, we're, of course, wiping the board and then rebuilding with Forge and then all of our token-creating Planeswalkers here in four and up here on six. This means we've got a good balance of control cards, but we're still trying to progress the game thanks to all of our token generators and our little utility cards down here in the threes. Now let's see some games with this deck over on the rank standard ladder. All right, we've got I Noon. Let's keep it. Will this work? Let's play the Vantage. Have not yet played High Noon, but very intrigued by the concept. So when I saw this list, it looked really fun. So I wanted to give it a try. Yeah, let's get it out there. See what happens. Can I win with a deck that does not contain Arcane Bombardment? Hmm, Outland Liberator. I mean, do we just let him sack it for the high noon? No, that can't be right. Cast Lightning Helix on the Liberator. Gotta at least get a chance to see what this thing does. Or doesn't do. Isn't that the Null Rod flavor text? Let's play our Case of the Crimson Pulse. It's our poor man's Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's all they left us. Opponent with the Festering Gulch. Might recognize that card from the uh, arena loading screen before your game. Okay, opponent just ramping up. Let's try to get an Emperor down here. Start creating some tokens, since it looks like that's what this deck wants to do. Keep watch for intruders. Mm, forge is nice. Let's make another token. Forge. Do the talking. Go to combat here. Swing in with these tokens. There's something. What is that? Colossal Rattleworm. Huh. Okay. You got me there. Coming across for the Wanderer. We will block that. And we'll hit that with a little Lightning Helix. Oh, they had the cut down for me. That's too bad. Well, thanks to the trample, still gets through at the Wanderer. Trying to eliminate that worm there. Ugh. Well, we've got Sunfall, but we're at 25. Let's lay down the Takasia's Welcome, try to refill this hand a little bit. We get land. Let's attack for two. Forge. And pass it on over. We do have Sunfall as like a backup. Would love it if they would play like one more thing to the board. Well, that's a thing. That attack brings us to 19. Shieldred gonna happen. Sunfall all that away. Make Forge token. Draw a card. Ah, oh, we get the big Eternal Wanderer. Sending in the Forge token. Punt looks like they got something for us. They're gonna hit it with Go for the Throat. 
really desperate to save three life there. Preacher. Okay. I mean, maybe this whole one spell a turn thing is uh, is helping us out. Let's see. If we wander... We could make a token and draw, but we know we're getting the forge token. Ah, and opponent scoops it up. Good game. Alright, this looks good. Start off with a bivouac. Hmm. For some reason when I play this deck, all the lands come together. Whenever I run my Boros Bombardment deck, it's always like, oh, will, will we draw the third, even the fourth land? Gix. Alright, well, I was just looking at this. Explosive Derailment. We can spree that, do four damage. Let's play Sundown Pass, get this freshly drawn forge going. So I was kind of debating whether or not to include the uh, spree explosive card in there. It reminded me a lot of a braid, and so I was going back and forth before we started this. I was like, do I just sub in a braids? What are the situations where the four damage is going to be super helpful? Let's get lost that shielded. Because uh, that's who I was specifically thinking of. I was like, we need at least five for shielded, but we do have some get losts. And so maybe the four is for things like Preacher, which more folks are adopting, but I don't know if there are that many other things that are for toughness now that are that troublesome. Then again, you do get kind of a late game bonus where you get to do two things. I don't know. I'm not the expert. But it's going to map on their Vran Executioner Thane. Gets rid of the Breach. Oh, and tosses Florian away too. Lightning Helix a little late to take care of this guy. Yeah, we'll send it in. No blocks? All right. Could have traded there with a Lightning Helix. Oh, opponent's got a Forge of their own. Hmm. Well, this could put us a little further into stalemate mode here. So as these forge tokens leave, Ron's going to trigger once a turn. And kind of mitigate mitigate their life loss and hit us for an extra two. Do we Brotherhood's End and take care of both forges? Let's go to combat. Let's see what they do here. Right, doubt we're seeing any blocks. So we could do double Brotherhood's End on damage, saving the Sunfall. Or we could do one Brotherhood's End and Lightning Helix on Vron. And so now it's our bigger forge against their smaller forge. We've still got the backup of Extra Brotherhood's End if things get really out of hand. Oh, are we going to see Obnixilis? No. All right. Tell you what, let's power up the bivouac. Let's see if we can speed this up. Hit the opponent for eight, down to four. Gonna need an answer for this forge. And the bivouac, quite frankly, goes to combat, hits us for three. Full grip of six cards. Floating two black mana. Virtues their own creature to gain three life. <laughs> Brotherhood's end takes care of the forge. All right, that was my plan. 
That was my backup plan. Okay, well, bivouac. No longer enough to finish this game on its own. Opponent bought themselves one more turn. Hitting them down to two. Opportunist. Sure. Let's make sure we count this out, right? Uh, yeah, get lost. Bone get some maps. Power up the bivouac. Do you have the removal? Oh, they do. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, we're in this a little longer. Maniform Hellkite. Oh, this opponent's going to get to their virtue, aren't they? Powering up the Hellkite with the map. Finds a theater. Finds another theater. What do we do here? If we sunfall it, they can't get it back with the virtue. Um, it's just one thing. Let's see. We could have done derailment, but then we would have had nothing else left. A second Hellkite. Okay. Ah, Lightning Helix. Thank you. <laughs> Good game, opponent. Good game. All right, opponent going first. Let's keep this. Opponent with the Undercity Sewers tosses a land to the side. Hedge Maze. So opponent seems to be rich in lands is what they're telling me. Nice three-of-a-kind lightning helix on our side as they surveil again. Puts depopulate away. Yeah, correctly reading that we don't have any creatures. Let's get Sokenzan and Forge. Nestle our derailment right there. An offer you can't refuse. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a make disappear. Well, that puts us ahead on treasure, I suppose. Let's try for an Archangel. Opponent has involuntarily given us protection from make disappear, I suppose. Yeah, let's make a token. Pass it on over. Mm-hmm. Well, before we do this, let's put some counters on this creature. It works. Let's go to combat. And high noon. Are we going to fight over this one? No. Okay. Oh, wow. So it's a Sultai deck. It's running Rafine's Tower. We've seen an offer you can't refuse. Let's attack with our token. I mean, next turn at seven mana, if they've got it, that's kind of the magic number. Could start seeing uh, a little Toxril, some Breach. There's more white, even. Okay. Ah, uh, Atraxa. Uh, I wonder if this is like a reenact the crime situation. Aha, yes. Conspiracy Unraveler. Push and pull. Reenact the crime. Okay. Definitely a crimes deck. Let's helix them at the end of their turn. Oh, can't do that twice because of high noon. Um, 
I mean, we might as well just sack it anyway, right? Five damage. Because I think we've got enough to just take him out right here. And I mean, High Noon is kind of protection from that game plan anyway. Right? I mean, I suppose they could push-pull, but then the Conspiracy Unraveler can't unravel anything. And... Yeah, that is Exaxes. Wow. Good game. All right. Start off with the bivouac. Love it when it lines up this like this. We can get lost something on two. Ooh, even better, lightning helix it. We will not give our opponent the map advantage too early. Then go into welcome, into emperor. Mm, feels great. Let's go welcome. Mm, that slid right through. Usually when they've got the two up with some blue, it's like, well, what, what's it going to be? Make disappear, negate, an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> Ouch, no fourth land. Well, let's get the second welcome going. Mm, think, looking at our lands, what are you going to do? Field of Ruin on the bivouac. All right. Let's grab a mountain. Let's grab a sad Dominaria mountain. All right. Sundown pass. Speaking of passing, we're just going to pass it on over to the opponent. Try to draw two at the end of our opponent's turn here with some Emperor. And if they counter it, we'll just run it back again. Opponent thinking about something. I got some kind of instant. Let's make a token. Drawn two. Fairy Mastermind. No. We draw another Eternal Wanderer. And a third welcome. Oh, wow. Hmm. All right, let's let's just draw two for now. Just a free two for every token we make. There's Forge, Sunfall. Let's play out Forge. Perhaps we've got two mana free. The foil to make disappears everywhere. There we go. Opponent's waking up. Forge token. There's an emperor jumping the gun. Opponent creates a token. I mean, we could just not attack, right? That timing was a bit weird. No, we're still attacking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's send in the Samurai at their Wanderer. We're going to go ahead and Lightning Helix their token. Take down their Wanderer. Forge token goes away. Sunset Revelry. Couple of blockers there. What do we got next? A Jace? A, <laughs> it's like what four mana planeswalker is our blue and white control player going to throw at us next? Uh, question is how many of those do they run, and can we kind of let Jace dirtle around on the board for a turn? Let's see. If they were going to mill us, they probably just would have done it. Put a token on a samurai. Make a forge. Draw two. 
We get Brotherhood's End. Alright, let's send these two over at Jace. Kind of see what's going on there. Blocks the Samurai and the Forge token. Jace going to get hit for one. I mean, let's just get lost him. Now that those tokens are off the board, they can't really take advantage of the map tokens. We'll plop down this third welcome and keep the cards a coming. Teresian Mindbreaker. Fair enough. Uh, well, we've got the mana for Eternal Wanderer. A handy little ability where we can exile that. Clears the way for our tiny little tokens. We will improve the quality of our tokens slightly and uh, draw three and look to attack for nine. And opponent scoops it up. Good game. Opponent going first. This looks okay. We'll keep derailment. We've got an early forge, which is always nice. Uh, love sometimes getting forged down against mono black because there's pretty much nothing they can do about it. It's very similar to uh, bombardment when you get it going. If you can land that, you're usually in good shape. Okay. But with just an armadillo thus far. We'll get in for our one. Didn't even grab a desert. The poor armadillo, that's all he wants to do. Alright, going to combat. Attacking for two. Opponent down to 20. Yeah, let's pass it on back. Five mana. A cheap Nissa. Discount bargain basement Nissa ascended animist. Ah, uh, to destroy the forge. Yeah, that makes sense. So, is this like a green and white control deck? This is kind of intriguing. Let's play our wanderer, make a token, start going to work that way. Mm, power up the bivouac, I guess. Opponents had kind of a slow start. Start filling up the board and see if their control deck has the tools to deal with this. Putting a counter on the bivouac because just in case they do have a way to wipe this, we've got a strong bivouac as a backup attacker. Oh, they do. Okay. I don't know. I, I've never seen this. Maybe some of y'all have seen this. If you have, send me a deck list because that's kind of a interesting idea. Let's get our Eternal Wanderer down. Make a double strike token. And put a little, put a little counter on that token. Opponent get... Mm, opponent hits the regular Wanderer with a get lost. Oh, because they had another one for the big one. <laughs> okay. Well, it leaves us with a token. That has double strike. <laughs> we get another Eternal Wanderer. Well, let's go Archangel Elsbeth here. Leaves us options in using maps or casting Lightning Helix. Let's do some maps. An opponent scoops it right up there. Good game. <laughs> 